hello everybody i hope you're doing well or welcome back to another video this is my june wrap up and june was pride month so like last year i only read books by or about queer people and like queer authors and queer stories just put that there um to talk to you about all these books so i read 12 and i dnf'd one and i'm currently still reading razor blade tears by sa cosby i'm about like 80 pages left i did want to finish and count it as you june read i probably will on my like core pile but it will be in next month's wrap up because i want to do this today um also i've been reading camp damascus by chuck tingle i'm about 100 and maybe 10 pages left of that i'm um, enjoying that a bit meh but we'll see i'll see so, um two books from my 24 2024 that i did want to finish i started at the beginning of the month um the first is straight jacket by matthew todd i'm only on page 48 this is just it's quite heavy and it's quite dense um but i do want to still continue reading this i'm going to continue it into june and probably maybe further on into the year because it's just like one that you can't really read in one big gulp you have to like take your time with it uh but i'm enjoying that a lot um and also like people in history by felice picano i'm on page 208 to 512 pages um it is quite a chunky one um i am enjoying this a lot um just again it's a little bit dense and they might be in next month but these two definitely shall be so just wait for that without further ado let's get to the books i actually read in the month and the first was the love of singular men by victor haringa this is translated from portuguese by james young this it's quite hard to fully pinpoint what genre it is i put it into literary but it has sort of like some historical and some little bit romancy and um just different ones as well uh but this is set mostly in 1970s and it's about camillo who is thinking back on this hot summer within the 1970s um in the north zone of rio de janeiro and how um he like finds a fondness for this boy that comes to stay with his family um cosme and how they sort of begin a friendship and then sort of romance but it can't really go anywhere um and he's thinking back in like the 2010s to this summer and um how it led up to a like a devastating event and how that has impacted him and other people in the community um up until that time um it was it's sort of about like first grief and like revenge in a way and lots of other things as well about like climate as well and how like just like burning boiling hot it is there and how it's like so unbearable and how like he's thinking back to like, so like his father and stuff like said like the taps would like get cold or freeze or something but now they're just continuously like hot um and um i guess also like being gay in 70s brazil and um yeah just like some other things as well it's written really really well um and it has sort of like some not really mixed media but it's like like little letters and a few photographs as well um and um yeah it's really hard to pinpoint down what it is is quite like ambitious in its scope and i do think it paid off not everything i loved but um i would so so recommend this and i think i'm going to give us about a 4.5 or 4.75 star rating i would love to read more by him uh it's just really really like upsetting that he is no longer around and um i believe that he could have been such a massive talent but um he left something that is beautiful and heartbreaking at the same time and i do definitely definitely recommend giving this a read and next i read was the manga our colors by Gengoro Tagami, um, which was translated from Japanese by Anne Ishii. Um, this is a really big manga. Um, it's like, like there's nice like like pictures and stuff. I think they're done quite well. I do think the male characters are drawn a little bit older than you would expect them to look at 16, especially the main character in his love interest. But um, on the whole, I think the artwork is good. Um, this basically follows. I always forget his name, but I, like literally I read it and then like two days after I was doing my review for TikTok because all of these books have their own TikTok review which I was trying to do in June and hopefully continue for the rest of the year um 
and I just can't remember, which is so bad. But anyway, it follows a young 16 year old man, boy, um, and he is coming to terms with the fact that he is gay and what it is like to still live in Japanese society being a young gay man. And um, he doesn't really, he wants to tell people, but at the same time, he's like worried like how it will like impact like his relationships with his friend and family. But um, he meets this older gay man who owns a cafe and he is like quite out and proudly so and he sort of like they grow a bond and like a friendship and like he mentors his and things um and we also get um like the story from um the boy's friend and um how like everyone like expects them to be a boyfriend and girlfriend like because they like you know it's all for so long but um obviously that's not what <laughs> it's gonna happen um and just like how they navigate the time stuff nothing really all that that much happens in it um i feel like it's quite long for what it says and some parts you actually wish they would have been addressed more in this book instead of you know rehashing some other things um the bit right at the end I didn't really like, I didn't really know why it was added in there and I do feel like it sort of hinders its scope being recommended to some people. Um, but yeah, on the whole I think it was fine but I didn't love it, I think I'm going to give us a bite three star rating. I then listened to the audiobook of Dear Queer Self by Jonathan Alexander. This is actually the third in his creep trilogy of like memoirs um it's following him as he goes to university in um like near new orleans and um then the few years after that as well i think it goes from like 80 something up until like 99 and it's sort of split into three time frames and then it leads up to different years and it's just sort of about like the politics at the time and what it was like growing up gay and um in like the south specifically and um like being at university and different relationships and friendships and um just like navigating that and like employment and yeah i think it was fine um i didn't really think he added all that much to the discussions and um yeah i sort of forgot quite a bit of what happened um it is a little bit forgettable not all that much he says there's sort of a few things are rehashed as well sometimes and um yeah sorry i don't really have that much to say about this i thought it was fine i think for star rating probably about like a three or 3.5 maybe satisfaction by nina brewery to translate from french by anisa abbas higgins this was one of my 24 2024 and that list has been a bit up and down um i didn't love this the reason this was on that list and why i wanted to read this so so badly and was just so anticipating it to be like an amazing five star read because last year i read all men want to know and that was just exquisite um it's amazing a million billion percent recommend giving that book a read this less so it's following Michelle Ackley and she is a like a french woman living in algeria with her french husband and their son um and the son befriends this girl i want to call her a girl because that's what she's called in the book and she's called with a she but she has chosen the name bruce because bruce wayne i think it was sort of like her idol and um that is like who she wants to be i guess and but she does portray some more like masculine sort of qualities and like the way that she interacts with um erwan who is michelle's son and um sort of like playing and things um but they sort of grow a friendship and then michelle um meets um bruce's mum catherine and she sort of like has like a fascination with her and like she wants to sort of like explore more of her sexuality and um like who she is but it's like quite repressive being a french woman or like just a woman in algeria during the time i think it's set like in the 70s i'm maybe wrong but i think it's, it's just a few years after the algerian war of independence and um sort of like relationship with france are obviously quite tense and french nationals but there is still sort of like the hierarchy and um the some of the french people in the city of algiers um are the ones with like the more money and the more power and um it's sort of just like navigating what it's like to be a person, a French person and a French woman 
and possibly a lesbian in this situation um yeah i thought it was fine it does say quite a few things the writing is again really really lovely um i did underline and like star some parts and a lot a lot less than oh my want to know like some parts are just like underline but there is not much like stars and things um but nothing really all that much is said it's quite a lot of just you know back and forth back and forth and rehashing the same sort of conversations and like things um which definitely like takes away from the impact and like the purpose of the book and i just didn't understand why she despises bruce so much and she calls her such like horrible names and like thoughts about her and i get that she's thinking that she's trying to take her son away but it's just too much and it just gets you like really really frustrating and just like why are you doing this like why um i guess also in some ways she is possibly like on the brink of like a breakdown in some sense and um like leading up to that which i do understand and you do get those sort of subtleties but it's not fully really that well explained or explored um so yeah i'm a little bit disappointed in this i did still enjoy it for the most part and i would recommend it but um i didn't love it and um there are parts that i did not enjoy so i think for star rating i think maybe out of 3.25 stars so yeah uh it's not look oh <laughs> I thought that was a, oh, oopsie daisy. I thought it was a big, um, like, stack of books that was about to fall there. But, um, this month hasn't been the best and it sort of continues, but let's move on. <laughs> Um, and that is very much true for the next book. Um, this is How You Lose a Time War by ML Al Murta and Max Gladstone. Um, I don't read sci fi. I think the only sci fi I've ever read and liked was the power but that isn't fully decided sci-fi it's more sort of dystopia um and i can't really remember any other ones i've read maybe like the time traveler one you know like that really early one um did not like that um but this no i didn't like it i didn't it is so so confusing um like up until like page like 80 or something i was like i it's so like confusing sort of what is going on like the bigger picture but also like the little picture and also it's the same thing just happening again and again and again it's basically these two war infractions like a time war um i think one's called garden and the other's called the like agency or something like that but um red and blue are sort of like the top agents of these two fractions and they like begin like sending messages to each other through these different like weird forms like it comes like in lava or like um like a berry or something and different like weird things like bones like they like drop and then like the dust like scatters the message like it's really really confusing um and then they read this message and then this seer comes along and like eats the bones or whatever like does like these weird things and then the reader gets to see what the message was the messages were the best part because they sort of go from like enemies to sort of like friendship up until like lovers and the romance is nice and pleasant and it is nice to follow them going on but a lot of the book is just so confusing and for me it did not pay off like i still didn't really like get what was going on i don't really know why and um I just thought it was a very frustrating read. I would not recommend this, but I know lots of people love it. Um, it is like sapphic because they're all sort of like two, I'm guessing female people, but I don't really know what they are still. Um, and the ending is just a bit, I don't know. I really don't know how to feel about it. It just, it confuses me and it makes me feel stupid. And I don't like books that do that. And I do read like quite a lot of like literary books that are like, you know, like quite pretentious. But this was just too confusing. Um, and yeah, would not recommend. I then started the Simon Verse series. Um, I do have a whole vlog which you can check up there if you so desire to do so. So I won't talk that much about these 
four books, but um, the first was Simon vs. Homo Sapiens and Gender by Becky Albertelli. Um, this is following Simon and his friends Leah, Nick, and Abby. And Simon is gay, closeted, living in like this like small town in Georgia. Um, and um, he like sort of has already established email correspondences with another closeted gay guy at his school and then he starts getting blackmailed by a, by a guy called Martin who wants him to sort of get him to go out with Abby I just follow his, his like navigations of sort of like teenage life and like with like never like his friends and family and what it's like to sort of like be gay still in in sort of contemporary American society in some sense um and with this added burden of sort of being blackmailed and like how this will develop um, and yeah I thought this was really really done so well I did enjoy it um, in that video I said quite a few times that I had already watched the film Love Simon many many times before reading this book so I know the plot points and the plot twists and how the actual story develops and who is like the person that is blue um, who he is messaging um but um so some of the magic was maybe taken away from the reading experience but at the same time it was still really nice to follow these characters and have him um sort of discovering things there are um plot differences between the two um i prefer the film uh, just because i know it a lot more and um i just thought it was just really really well done and i love like the scenes with his parents uh but this book was still really really good i would so recommend it um did I always say four stars? Yep, good. Then the best of the series um, is The Upside of Unrequited. This isn't actually part of the like series in a way, it's just a book in the same universe. This is following Molly, who is the cousin of Abby, um, and she lives in Washington DC, I believe. I why keep like forgetting things like plot points, but whatever. Um, and she lives with her twin sister Cassie and their mums and their younger brother as well. And um, Cassie has started seeing this new girl called Mina, and and she thinks it's going to be an actual like relationship with her because she's more just like hook up, sort of like and go um but um this is sort of like something a bit bigger and um molly is a bigger girl um so it's sort of like her navigating the teenage experience being like fatter and um sort of not wanting to put herself out there because she's scared of rejection um and um she sort of had like so many crushes but no actual like boyfriends no first kisses no like nothing because she doesn't want to like be put herself out there for like rejection and it's just a lot of like how she goes about like life and how like people around her are getting into relationships and like having like more longer term relationships and um like different like first and different experiences that she isn't having and of course like she's happy for them because they're like her family and friends but at the same time she's thinking like well what about me like when's my time like when am I gonna have these things and um I like so 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 got on board with her. I like I fully understood her, and has so many like relatability like acts best because I am a bigger person and I I sort of I like, understood the things that she was feeling and going through. Like Mina and Cassie want to set her up with Max, I believe, who is Mina's friend. But there's also this new guy called Reed at the place that she's like working for the summer at, who is like another possible you know like boyfriend material um and how she um sort of like goes about pursuing a possible relationship um and yeah i really 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 enjoyed this um i've seen some people like say reviews that like it's about finding validation in having a boyfriend and like you know being desired but it's not really for me that's not how i read it i read it more about you need to put yourself out there you need to you know sort of go for things because oh yes of course there may be a rejection there's a high possibility even more so when you are bigger but there's also the what if and like what if things do develop what if like you do have you know a future um and that is like the main part and why i really, really enjoyed it so i'm going to give us four points on five star ratings um not every not every part of it was like a really really good and there was some plot points and things um but at the same time I just felt like seeing again and um, I really loved the main character and um, 
yeah, would so, so recommend that. And you can read this as a standalone if you don't want to read the rest of the series. Um, and personally, I would just read Simon and this. I then read the poetry collection Crush by Richard Sykin because I wanted to get away from that universe for a bit. Um, I thought I was going to like love this, like full five stars jazz hands um sort of poetry book but i didn't fully love it i liked it a lot i'm gonna end up giving it a four star rating um it's quite difficult to pinpoint what he is saying and what the poems are actually about but on the whole it's very very decent um it's all about like queerness and um like obsession and love um and um he says on the back his poetry is confessional gay savage and charged with violent eroticism i didn't fully get that personally of the 21 poems two were like ones i really really loved um and they was a primer for the small weird loves and i had a dream about you um but there was definitely parts in like other ones that I like underlined and starred and like different spoke to me. The last one, which is the longest one called You Are Jeff, I found very confusing. I did read it like again after I finished it. Um, but it's the bit like the end of that is probably the best part of the whole book. And I thought I'd just really read that out because I just know every time I read this bit, I just really, really, really love it. Um, so it says, You're in a car with a beautiful boy, and he won't tell you that he loves you, but he loves you. And you feel like you've done something terrible, like you robbed a liquor store, or swallowed pills, or shoveled yourself a grave in the dirt, and you're tired. You're in a car with a beautiful boy, and you're trying not to tell him that you love him, and you're trying to choke down the feeling, and you're trembling, but he reaches over and he touches you like a prayer for which no words exist and you feel your heart taking root in your body like you've discovered something you don't even have a name for so yeah i just thought that was really really lovely um and yeah obviously you don't read poetry quickly but um yeah i would recommend it i can't really tell you what it's about but um it was good so that was that the next book I read or listened to was Lies You Sing to the Sea by Sarah Underwood. I liked it. I thought it was a very, very decent read. It's far too long. Um, things are said like the same thing multiple, multiple times. And it does get a little bit jarring. Um, also, there was a little bit of controversy surrounding the author's not having read the whole of the Odyssey and this book is inspired by the Odyssey or at least the story from it. I'm highly positive she read that story otherwise she wouldn't have been able to you know get the inspiration for the book but um, I see how some people might be like oh well she should have done but at the same time you don't have to if your book isn't about the whole thing so i sort of see both sides to the, that the discourse um but i thought this book was decent like i said um it's a fantasy it's not a mythology it's not a mythological retelling it's a fantasy set in sort of ancient greece with um a loose connections to the, like handmaids of helena or was it penelope i can't remember i'm sorry but um the woman that like weaved um like her tapestry or something like waiting for odysseus i believe to come back to her um and like these different suitors were said like oh when you finish it i'll marry you but she kept like unpicking the thing and like redoing it so she didn't have to you know, marry someone else um i think that's sort of what it's about but basically basically what the actual book is about because that's irrelevant um for the most part anyway um this girl called leto and all every year in the city of ithaca um 12 like young women get these sort of like line on her neck and that means that she is to be one of the 12 sacrificed to the poseidon um so the like city can like carry on like thriving um well I say that but um so she is essentially murdered and her body is put into the sea as an offering to Poseidon 
Um, but then Leto wakes up on this island called Pandu and this sort of like scaly weird creature is there. She's called Melantho and she tells that she is the last of these 12 chosen girls who have been tasked with um, setting out to kill 12 princes of Ithaca and then the curse will be lifted and the 12 girls every year wouldn't have to be killed for the sacrifice um and it's basically following this sort of story and how um Leto and Melantho go back to Ithaca to try and kill the prince Matthias and um Leto sort of like starts having feelings for both Melantho and Matthias and um, a possible you know relationship brewing in either way and how they need to sort of like get this sort of like curse taken away with you know what i'm trying to say um and it's just basically exploring that um it's like has sort of like plot pointy things and changes and stuff and like the romance parts were nice it is ya um i do feel like it would have benefited from being an adult because then underwood could have gone into things more and made a little bit more like intimate and you know better in some sense um but yeah i thought it was fine um and yeah i don't fully know what to say about it this isn't really what i read ever anything like this but oh that's also why i said i hadn't said earlier that i was trying to pick books to fulfill each genre and read a book from that genre but a queer book from that genre um and this was sort of like my fantasy pick um and yeah i'd recommend it i enjoyed it but there is issues um and i do need to have like more of a deep dive into the reading experience of this book uh but yeah i think i'm gonna settle on like a 3.75 um so yeah it wasn't terrible um i then read another poetry book which is at least this i know by andres N. Orderica. Um, this I felt was really, really good. I think it was give us about a 4.5 star rating. Um, it's it's um about this idea of ni de aqui ni de ala. Butchered that I'm sorry, but that is the thing there. And it's all about living in a place of neither here nor there. And it details his experience um sort of in like mexico usa and scotland and how it feels like to be sort of like an immigrant in some sense or like a person without a fully pinned down home and um it's like his like family like generations before and also what it is like being queer in different spaces it's split up into like different sections um of like think where i begin where i grown lost given love a uh, burn um and then a really good epilogue as well um and it's just all about like his family and um you know the past and how it's impacting him into the future and yeah i thought it was really really good uh, i've got a little <laughs> funny thing here but let's see if i can just you know tell you a few uh the first one that i thought was it was in for papa which is one of the early one um basically his dad is sort of like singing a song and then he starts to hum along and he's like the words from that song love has no need for the cartographer because love has no borders love is not a planet and so it can never be destroyed love has no expiration date and so a love will always exist love is a songbird that flies many thousands of miles to find home in the heart of another um one called rosemary is a very short one um i came upon a sprig of rosemary hanging in a row of five tied with twine to a fence and a sign that read help yourself the smell of it ceremonial reminded me of life seasons and i was grateful to be alive four men um i won't like read any of this one but it's basically details four different encounters he's had with four different men um and sort of about sort of queer culture and um this part as well i thought was good i told myself it won't always be like this you won't always hurt sometimes they might even love you in return um and i thought that one was just done really really well um i think my favorite is possibly Benacci, um and this is when he's like on a um like mountain in scotland and the other guy is saying like how like he feels himself in this landscape but um the author is basically saying i longed to know a land like that close enough to feel at home and for that home to love me back like i was her one and only son about like how it is not having a full 
you know, home place to go to. Um, and another one that was really good is called Ramesh's Magic Carpet Ride. And that's about how, um, like, as a brown person in different spaces, you sort of just become any brown person. Like, where you are from, it doesn't fully matter to some people. Um, it's just that the fact that you are brown and that sort of, like the main thing about you and it's actually not um of course but um yeah i thought it was really really good so so recommend so i'd love to read more by him um and yeah that's all i have to say i then have leah on the offbeat um which is the second in the actual sequels um this i think is the worst book i read this month um it's basically following leah and she's in a band with other girls from the school um she's always like friends with simon and the other ones um and it's about her like detailing like the fight like senior year of high school um sort of like her weird relationship with her mom and um sort of like possible like where she can go to university um she does like struggle with money and i did quite like that because um it's sort of like not that so shown in books like people like thinking like a lot about like money um especially like in the town that she lives um and i do get sort of like the angst and like the uncertainness and the stresses of the future and sort of like saying goodbye to your friends and um, like where you're gonna go and things like that i think are done okay um but all of the characters just felt off in this um definitely leah i really did not like her at all um it just got so like jarring irritating seeing things from her point of view because she just became such and like frustrating and nasty character um and i just didn't really want to you know be with her anymore and what i did think about dnf in this and i kind of wish i did and about her navigating her crush on nick but also possibly Abby um and there's this other guy called Garrett who like they sit at a table with um who everyone thinks like they, they should be together because they're both sort of like single and seemingly straight she's actually bi um but and it's also about sort of, like her being scared to tell people she's bi not because she doesn't think their their reaction will be you know good but um more because it's sort of gone a long time now so she's thinking like oh i should have told her before um which i get um and yeah but yeah it just was a bit off very very off and not an enjoyable reading experience would not recommend this at all especially if you'd like simon um but um the main issue which isn't addressed and it's not a spoiler really but i'm just gonna say if someone comes out to you or tells you about coming out no don't discredit it and don't make it about yourself and um this is something that happens and it isn't addressed now this but that was really really irritating and like you don't want things to be left unsaid um so that really heavily brought it down on top of the already like weirdness of the characters um but yeah i think in my review i gave this maybe about a three but i think i'm gonna drop this down to a 2.5 um and i think i'm gonna put it as a two on goodreads so yeah very very disappointing the last book i actually finished was love creekwood which is the final in the series um and this is basically just email encounters from the different characters as they're at university um sort of like dealing with like a long-term relationships and um sort of like how they're getting on with their courses um and just like navigating uni life in a way um i enjoyed it i think i actually some arts this would have been really really done well as sort of like maybe like a new adult novel from one of their perspectives possibly bram um or simon the storyline would have lended itself really really well to that um i thought it was fine a little bit unnecessary um but yeah i think probably going to give us about a 3.5 star rating but it was still like nice to like go back to these characters um and you know leave them at this point um the final book which i dnf'd was the cutting room by louise welsh i dnf this i think about 23 percent um this is following rilke and he is sort of like a auctioneer sort of person in glasgow and he's tasked with um 
sort of getting all the stuff out of this uh, like rich guy's house that's recently died and the sister of the deceased um, <laughs> wants him to you know get rid of the stuff quick and just said like i'll pay you whatever just like get it out so he's sort of doing that and then he goes into like the attic room or something which only he has access to but that's what the sister said um and um he finds these like photos of like a girl that has like been murdered i think or something also some like weird you know like sex game stuff um and he is like just being told to you know get rid of them you know destroy everything um by the sister but i think he actually wants to like investigate this and sort of like I'll see like are they real photographs like what's actually gone on here like has it been like a murder or something um and yeah i feel like it had you know intrigue and had potential but it's sort of like setting it's sort of like cd like glasgow like rilke is like gay and um it's just i don't know i just wasn't getting on board with him or like the location or anything to be honest i was listening to the audiobook narrated by alan cummings i do think he is incredible and it, he is does do it really really well um but it was just making me feel very very uncomfortable and i just felt like possibly i might go back to it in the future but very unlikely i don't really like the books like this sort of like seediness um it's something that is apparent in this book as well and it's something i really don't like um so we shall just see but i did think i had to dnf this and i do wish some other books i had dnf but i didn't and i need to get on the dnf train because i don't want to continue reading books that are like between two and 3.5 stars i want good ratings so yeah um that is the end of this video um i hope you had a good pride month um and uh let me know what was your favorite book you read or least favorite book you read in the month if you wish to do so um stay tuned for my july wrap-up coming at the end of the next month um and also more videos obviously within the month um i like your little flag it's cute so yeah um have a nice morning even though wherever you are in the world and i shall be seeing you very very soon bye, bye.